Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Uncultured Universe. We are the podcast where two friends show each other movies, shows, and anything else that they need to see, hear, or experience in order to get a little more cultured. I'm your host, Joe, and I'm joined, as always, by the Uncultured Justin. Hello, hello. Today, it's time to be your own rainbow and try not to drink a bottle of yourself. It's the 1999 Saturday Night Live comedy superstar. 1999, that really surprised me. I honestly thought this was earlier in the 90s. Right, because we covered Wayne's World and that was 92? 92, yeah. 92. And yeah, I do do think of uh, Mike Myers, Michael Myers and molly shannon uh as kind of being in the same generation of snl were they not i don't think they were actually i don't think they if they did intersect it was probably for a very like one season if at all mike myers may have been like late very late 80s early 90s with like the dana carvey of it all because they were doing like early bush yeah and then molly shannon i know was like maybe mid to late 90s to early 2000s because she was with will ferrell so maybe a little bit of intersection there all right let's see uh when was she on snl television saturday night live 1995 okay so mike myers was on snl from 89 to 95 molly shannon was 95 to 2001 so there probably was a season where they uh overlapped or maybe not maybe it was tail end you know we so we grew up we randomly had these like dvd box sets of four different snl people where they would just like compile uh sketches together onto dvds because we didn't have like cable or anything so we just had like a shit ton of dvds at our house and so we had mike myers um i think chris Catan. Tracy Morgan and then Sherry O'Terry. What and a mix. kind of mixed together. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was kind of a crazy mix. That's wild. Um, I remember doing the same thing in college. We would watch like the best of Jimmy Fallon, the best mm-hmm. of, uh, uh, it was the like best that, of this, yeah. that crew, that, that crew, uh, the Fallon era, the Fallon years. Uh, so I guess you do have like the Mike Myers, um, Dana Carvey years transitions into, Molly Shannon, Will, Will Ferrell, Ferrell, among others. And then that eventually gets you to like the one, two, three punch of like Keenan, Sudeikis, uh, who else? Andy Samberg, yeah. um, Fred Armisen, and then getting into Kristen Wiig. Uh, and wow. Yeah, I think that's that's like when they when SNL, in my opinion, like reached Apex. Yeah. You know, Apex Predator kind of thing uh, <laughs> in terms of just firing on all all cylinders it was in the daily uh you know zeitgeist conversations of like did you watch snl last night all the these digital shorts with this guy andy samberg he does these raps and they're crazy like but like the season or like cast before that like that we were talking about with molly shannon will fair all that kind of stuff i think that's more of like the golden era yeah snl um even though you know we've we talked already about the early 90s late 80s you know dana carvey uh mike myers uh that kind of thing but it, it did no, kind of for a while yeah you did because you had like tina fey and amy poehler in there earlier as well and then for a lot of people in our generation it really hit with like the lonely island of it all and so that was kind of yeah. like the before versus after all right um and I mean, they we're talking about uh, SNL movies, this miniseries. I suppose they are still making movies based off of SNL properties. Like they just came out with a movie about the the group of guys who's like the Lonely Island follow up. Uh, Please don't destroy. They had their own movie. Um, oh, uh-huh. I saw that. I did not. Um, and but th- Specifically, one thing I noticed with Superstar, the movie that we're covering here, is that in the opening credits, there was like an SNL Studios. Like That surprised me, too. Brand. Yeah, I saw that and I was like, whoa, SNL Studios. I don't remember ever seeing that title card anywhere or yeah. hearing anything about that taking off. Yeah, I mean, so they have Wayne's World in the early 90s. That becomes a hit. Like 
financially even more so than like critically. Yeah. Um, and so that obviously puts some juice behind the idea. Like, yeah, let's translate some of these popular SNL skits, sketches, shows, scenes. We'll never land on the right word there. No. <laughs> into theatrical movies. And I don't know if they ever really reached the height of Wayne's world. Um, I mean, like I'll, I'll get into it with the details of this movie, but like, this movie didn't receive amazing reviews. Most of them were kind of like middling to negative. My sure. personal opinion is that they didn't really get it at the time. Mm -hmm. um, but it also didn't definitely didn't hit like the box office as hard as Wade's World either. Uh, sure. I, think, yeah. I think SNL was maybe just doing some weird stuff that the culture wasn't ready for. Um, yeah. And uh, they continue to do that today. And I think I mean, this... even though there, there's maybe less bite today, but we'll, we'll talk. Sure. Yeah. Like I think this character, Mary Catherine Gallagher, her whole skit, the whole deal, the whole, her whole deal uh, from the, um, the, the TV show, the, the, the skit, the skitdom sketchness mm -hmm. of it. Uh, I think it was kind of hard to kind of capture the same magic in, in feature length form. Mm -hmm. Um, because, you know, she does some of the gags and stuff that you see and a lot of the highlight skits and things like that. But, um, you know, it's it's like we talked about with Wayne's World, where you take the central idea, you know, two dudes in a basement doing a TV show and you kind of like plop them in a real world. You kind of extrapolate it. Um, it's kind of weird for a second. You got to get used to it. Yeah. I mean, at least with Wayne's world, you still have like the two hander between uh, Wayne and Garth. And so you can always kind of fall back on that uh, to be like, okay, this is, this is the energy we're getting from the skits. It's just yeah. between them and them talking. Um, but with Mary Catherine Gallagher as a character, it's kind of just her. So building the entire movie around her requires a lot more um, new stuff to be involved. So you have yeah. like, you have the voiceover, you have these new characters, you have this like very 90s premise of a story that resolves revolves around a high school talent show. Talent show. Yeah. It's so um, but yeah, where where are you coming into Molly Shannon and Mary Catherine Gallagher? What was your knowledge before? I remember this trailer and the conversation of like, you know, superstar, the movie or whatever. And um, I was like, oh, like, I don't. I don't really remember that skit. I, I'm kind of familiar, but um, you know, I the, just the, the armpits and the sniffing, uh, <laughs> <laughs> like that's the only thing I knew about this character. I was like, oh, they're doing a whole movie about that person. Interesting. I don't think I'm going to see that because um, this was 1999. Uh, you know, The Matrix was coming out, and uh, among, you were busy. I was busy. I had to go watch The Matrix and get my little 13 year old mind blown. <laughs> uh, so, um, it, this one passed me by, I was, you know, vaguely familiar with the, the concept of superstar, but, but that was it. Double feature of matrix and the superstar. We need to make it happen again. Could we? Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, let's talk about like what typically makes up like a Mary Catherine Gallagher sketch. So there yeah. were, I think at least 20, sketches over the years between like Molly Shan's heyday and SNL. And then a couple more times when she came back to SNL right. featuring Mary Catherine Gallagher, it is the character that she's most well known for this, uh, high school Catholic school girl who is extremely overconfident yet full of nerves yet hormonal and hypersexual yeah. yet has like gross out armpit humor because she's very, uh, weird and antisocial in certain areas she is she's tina belcher right? okay that inevitably did come up in my notes um just I, the this, the, go this ahead, is go kind ahead. of it's it's tina belcher this yeah. is maybe the closest we have to like a live action bob's burgers in a weird way which right. is crazy because we just covered bob's burgers i know um but yeah the tina belcher energy is coming off the page with Mary Catherine Gallagher. It's a, a level of like, she's so inside her own head. She constantly gets in her own way and yet she can't help, but just be like bursting forth with these like hormonal teenage girl energy and all the awkwardness that comes with it. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, the, the, the culmination of that is like the last scene when she's like saying bye to the tree and she's just <laughs> like shuddering, just like, <sighs> It's hilarious. And but yet it is totally Tina Belcher energy. 
I totally get why you love this movie and you love Bob's Burgers and all that because it's the connection that you didn't know was happening in your brain. Yeah, my my final note. So you you hear Mary Catherine Gallagher narrating the the movie the entire time, and in the, in the final scene, like you're seeing, you're saying she has been talking to a tree the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> which is like one of her former flings because she used to like uh, make out with trees. And so she's essentially like breaking up with it because she's like, I'm with Slater now. So um, fucking funny. But yeah, so you, you have this character and then a, a typical SNL skit revolving around this character takes place in like this uh, kind of Catholic school setting. So you have like students, you have other teachers. Sometimes she's in like a restaurant or somewhere else. Um, but it's very much like, oh, this is like a straight laced high school. Some sort of event is happening. And then she runs in immediately wants to introduce herself to everyone as Mary Catherine Gallagher, full name only. Um, and then attempts to do something with a level of overconfidence, ultimately gets shut down, always wants to express her feelings in a monologue from a made for TV movie. <laughs> um one of the best things about Molly Shannon in this character is how much she commits to acting out those monologues and yeah. how it never like makes sense with within the scene itself. She always picks the most random monologue from the most random movie, but it's clearly like, this is how I'm feeling at this time. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, the, the background that they they uh, build out within the movie is that she is the right rewind girl at a, a VHS rental store. Mm -hmm. And so this is a girl who basically uh, lives her life through movies. Um, and so that's kind of the only way she can express herself. Um, and then the skits typically end with a level of like extreme physical comedy. So uh, oftentimes it's Molly Shannon just like destroying the, the set. set. Yeah. <laughs> like getting like way too exuberant and just like crashing through a wall or like knocking down several toilet stalls. <laughs> yeah. um, like I, I, I think I, I read Molly Sh or I listened to Molly Shannon's uh, autobiography a couple years back. I wish I could remember more, but I, I, I know it was a point that they had to like really make sure a lot of the sets where she acted were like OSHA certified and safe structurally and, sound like, yeah. cushioned um, uh -huh. because she th there was no surface. She wouldn't have a chance of just like smashing her body against basically. I know. Um, Amazing. Yeah. Um, so you have this character. It's the breakout character for her. They decide to build a movie around her, giving her um, a, a grandmother character, giving her a more fleshed out school environment. And then, like I said, you you have um, kind of a pretty standard 90s uh, uh kids movie storyline where like she's got to win the big talent show to get the ticket to Hollywood to star in as an extra in a movie with positive moral values. <laughs> That's so funny. The, the uh, when they unfurl that giant banner and it's just wall to wall text. It's amazing. Help us fight venereal disease. Oh God. That's right. Oh, and then you've obviously got some, some SNL folks coming over mainly uh, Will Ferrell being a, a new character introduced here, the dual yeah. role of Sky Kerrigan and Jesus, oh, um, which I, I was totally not forgot. ready for that. Was not ready for that. That was, <laughs> yeah. Is he, is he credited as both? Yeah. Amazing. Oh yeah. That's great. Yeah. 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 I, I completely forgot he was playing God in this movie as well. Um, yeah. But yeah, it, incredibly quotable movie uh, in my household. <laughs> Um, screaming, you're horrible at each other. You're horrible. You're horrible. Um, Slamming the door at each other. That's amazing. Acting out like her acting out Sally Field as Sybil in Sybil. Um, we'll never get all <laughs> putting on a Puerto Rican accent. <laughs> um, it's, it's such a choice and it's so fun to like see them, uh, uh, you know, like these SNL characters just kind of just evolve and kind of just like take the ball and run yeah based on these little bits of exploration that they've done i mean you you have these uh tv actors and these tv um i i guess crew members like directors writers and all that and you always hear about the gap between like television and movies and how certain people just stick with one and not the other and it's interesting how these snl movies kind of paved the way for a lot of crossover there in the 90s like yeah. you would think 
maybe like is this the first four way foray into movies for someone like will ferrell who is known primarily as a movie star these days now, yeah um and I molly think- shannon and then mike myers and all that um it 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 was a natural stepping off point for a lot of them absolutely yeah like i think this was like about the time when Will Ferrell's hitting his crest mm-hmm. with within SNL and before like old school hits and like the and then Will Ferrell's in everything, you know, at mm-hmm. that point by the time the two thousands come around, uh, uh early two thousands. So yeah, it, it's a real interesting kind of like jumping off point um for all of these uh all these actors. Let me give you some stats here. Um so we're talking about superstar um released in october of 1999 directed by bruce mccullough who was also a writer on snl makes sense um starring the incomparable molly shannon will ferrell in a dual role harland williams as a 40 year old playing a teenager they're all 40 Um, playing teenagers (laughs) it's insane um uncultured universe fave elaine hendrix oh that's right Um, shout out elaine Mark McKinney, a.k.a. Glenn from Superstore, uh, and then Hollywood icon Glynis Johns in her last film role. But don't worry, uh, she just died this past January at the at 100. 100. It's amazing. Um, we so were watching a nice little retirement there. We were watching a little bit of the way through and Ryan goes, I know this woman. Hang on. And she looks it up and she's like, yep, that's right. Mary Poppins. Mary Poppins, baby. And she looked the same. Uh, uh, remarkably, um, she must have held some sort of record like her versus like Angela Lansbury versus like Betty White. I think it's like oldest person who was nominated for an Oscar or like oldest person from the golden age of Hollywood or whenever who was still alive mm. until she passed away this past year. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she stuck around. But yeah, I, I, I know her primarily from this and then as the imam from. Uh, Mary Poppins, yeah, which it's... I I would say most people do. So like after the movie, like Ryan's like singing to me like Mary Poppins song. She's like, "That's all I took away from that movie is that uh, <laughs> the lady from Mary Poppins was also in this movie." And that's where my brain stuck, and I was like, "That's amazing." I also had a note here. I don't know if this is correct because it was on Wikipedia, but um, Mark McKinney, who plays the the head priest of the school, his official name is Father Tylenol Ritley. <laughs> what? <laughs> Which made me laugh. Um, this movie made 30 million against a budget of 14. Not too bad. Um, but received mostly negative reviews because the world was clearly not ready for it at the time. Um, J- Justin, how did this uh, movie fare in the Jackson household? Um, uh, so this admittedly was not a um, like a, uh, a an LOL type of movie a a rolling a raffle kind of movie rolling on the floor mm-hmm. um it, it still had its ridiculous uh uh, s- uh scenes and in, in, that jumped out like I, I i wrote down some of my favorite stuff that that jumped out from it the bruce which is just the most ridiculous things that jumped out from the movie mm-hmm. um you know i kind of got the same kind of feeling from from watching wayne's world it's just like some sometimes the the comedy doesn't translate over or uh um you know, hit as hard as maybe an SNL sketch would because you have the live aspect of it. You have the audience participation of it kind of like, you know, lifting it up a little bit more. And that's the, that's the trouble with some of with comedy period, I think. But, um, yeah, so much classic nineties use of the arsler, uh, in this movie. Oh man. Yeah. That was, that was also like, (laughs) Oh, that's right. It's 1999. It's 1999. Hmm. Um, it was a troubling time for everybody, but yeah, um, we talk. I mean, we 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 talk about like the similarities between like the Bob's Burgers universe and Superstar in terms of like the the zany characters and the the central uh, Mary Catherine Gallagher being uh, very much Tina Belcher coded. <laughs> I I was also thinking while watching this. Um, it's kind of a precursor for a movie that came a few years later that I'm sure you've seen Napoleon dynamite. Oh yeah, definitely. So you have like that same just kind of weird, small town, dry, uh, vibe. You have this like socially out, not, not really outcast, but like 
a socially different central character that has a lot of confidence, but maybe isn't someone you would normally meet on the street. Yeah. Then, again, I, I, I think it's also a talent show in Napoleon Dynamite. That's it kind is. of like the mm -hmm. the ultimate goal at the end of the movie. Yeah. Or no, yeah. it's a it's a it's a school presidential election. That's right. That's right. Vote for Pedro. Yeah, of course. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I can totally see the connections there of like you said, socially outcast or, you know, not typical lead that you would follow. Um, someone who's kind of on the outskirts of typical like popularity within a high school. Mm -hmm. um, with that, when you do have high school passing looking people, this one, it's just they're 40. It's whatever. It's SNL wink, wink at the camera kind of thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, I can definitely see the similarities with Napoleon Dynamite. Like, I think that was kind of like newer era comedy uh you know going into the judd apatow yeah um uh like uh the diablo cody that kind of stuff like with juno and all that of mm -hmm. like it's the the comedy is more subdued it's more dialed back it's less about antics and over-the-top performances and it's more subtlety but a lot of those kinds of things still get played up here in superstar um and some of those bits made me laugh more um than some of the over the top ridiculous performances. Um, one one quote that I wrote down, it, it was just it never got it acknowledged or played up anymore. I can't remember her friend's name, but they're going to lunch, and she sits down with her plate and she says, "Do you want some of my sloppy Joseph?" And <laughs> for some reason, I thought that was just so fucking funny and brilliant because, of course, they would call it a sloppy Joseph in a Catholic at, school. at a Catholic school. Like, yeah, there's there's moments if you listen to them of like someone saying stuff over the intercom about like something being like Mary Magdalicious or something like oh, that. Yeah. Like they, they times, have yeah. uh, other times like that. It is so like cringe comedy from a Catholic school setting. It's, it's so great. Yeah. Um, but like some of those subtler bits uh, I, I thought were uh, um, more successful, I think. And, you know, uh, more akin to some of like those more modern comedies that, that we kind of mm -hmm. think of that are, that are just played more straight and more just like deadpan, um, which I think, you know, is what the audience was ready for at that time. Yeah. I mean, you, you're right. You, you have something like Napoleon Dynamite that's maybe like an evolved version of this because it does have, it's weird to say it about Napoleon Dynamite, but like it does have kind of a more cohesive story and it has more like emotionally grounded characters. Whereas yeah. with Superstar, you can kind of tell like, they were like, OK, these are the pieces we're working for from the uh, the 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 sketch on SNL. Like mm -hmm. these are the key ingredients. Literally, let's just start throwing some stuff at the board um, for uh, what to build around that in order to make a movie. And so you have Mary hallucinating Jesus. You have the backstory of her parents getting stepped to death in a step competition. It's literally you can tell it's like they were like, who's who's going to say no? Like, what? Wh we yeah. don't have any rules here. Why, why does it matter? Just get yeah. a laugh. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, and and the the storyline is very, it's pretty simple, right? It's like you said, it's a high school com uh, competition <laughs> talent show. She's pining for the popular kid. She has a best friend, but there's like love triangle, third party guy ties back to her backstory, which I thought was which was interesting and fun. Uh, coming of age tale. There's mm -hmm. there. Uh, there she has a, a nemesis character in Elaine Hicks. Again, shout out Elaine. Um, amazing, like you know, typical kind of like high school film type of things. Right. It it almost feels like there's there's certain comedy shows in this same setting that kind of deal with like a slightly like one percent heightened version of reality um than normal so you have like something like malcolm in the middle or mm. pete and pete yeah uh, is what i think of where it's just like these yeah this this setting looks familiar but this is not existing on earth in, yeah in a weird way <laughs> the absurdity is turned up just a little bit a little bit more uh where you kind of have over the top characters like arnie the most the strongest man in the world that kind of thing where it's just a little cheeky, that kind of thing. Or you have, and the only comparison I can think of is the the more modern com comedies of like Modern Family, The Office, mm -hmm. Parks and Rec, where it's kind of like slice of lifey. Um, you're kind of like taking a peek inside of a world, even though there are still zany characters there. It's still like reality based in a way. 
I don't know. God, we got to talk about like the Nickelodeon movies of the 90s and 2000s, oh. too, and how that was kind of like the kid version of all of this. Uh, oh, so yeah. you have SNL like releasing movie versions of their sketches. And then you have Nickelodeon movies that are like launching kid careers. Like, have you ever seen Harriet the Spy? I did not see Harriet the Spy, but I am familiar. But I do remember the um, Good Burger movie, the original Good Burger movie. Yeah. From the 90s. Like the classic, what is it? Like the the orange video cassettes that you always knew yeah, were yeah, yeah. Nickelodeon. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But that's that spun off Keenan Thompson's career from mm -hmm. the kids version of SNL, which was all that from Nickelodeon, which was incredible. It was the same thing. Maybe all the TV and movie producers just across the industry just got together in the 90s and were like, OK, here's what we're going to try. We're going to A-B test some stuff. You yeah. guys have got these people. You guys have got those kids. Let's slot them in Let's in November. We're all going to make money here, baby. Everyone's going um, Yeah. <laughs> all right. So talking um, about the... Uh, Go ahead before I make you do a plot description. I was going to say, before we jump into the plot description or any deeper into the movie, let's take a look at the trailer and then get the get the flavor. And we'll Give go from me. there. Justin once again proving that this podcast is actually a front and his true <laughs> skills lie in creating beautiful TikTok worthy fan cams of the movies that we cover. When are when are we releasing the album for these things? Uh, fall 2024. Stay on the lookout. <laughs> uh, we're going to partner with uh, Matt from Puppy Songs and he's going to help us do it. It's going to be great. Maybe. Uncultured uh, Universe Hits Volume 1. Volume um, 1. Hitting, yeah, your, hitting yeah. your uh, eye holes and ear holes. TBD. Uh, yeah. Producing TBD. only on compact disc. Mm, okay. A little mm. bit of retro stuff. Um, yeah. Let's 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 go ahead and do this this plot. Uh, so we can <laughs> dance around it, and uh, we'll we'll dig into it a little bit more. Might be deceptively hard, but let's see. Might All right. Be. One minute to give you the plot of Superstar. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. Ready. Go. Superstar uh, centers around Mary Catherine Gallagher, who is this exuberant 40-year-old child in, in Catholic school uh, who just loves life and just is a horny teenager. And she wants to perform in the local talent show so she can go to Hollywood and star in a film with uh, upstanding moral values. Uh, but she's also pining after the popular kid who is Will Ferrell. But she also has a friend, and but she also has an enemy, uh, 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 once again, with Elaine Hendricks. Uh, so she's going to practice and she's going to do the thing, but grandma says no, because, uh, your parents died by getting stomped to death because they were Irish step dancers. So you can't perform. And she's like, no, I'm going to do it. And she's like, well, if you're going to do it, you can do it the right way. So like she gets with the other, uh, uh, kids in her, um, special ed class, uh, and they put on her performance and, uh, she wins. And, uh, but then there's like this kid that she saved his life, which was from the first scene. And it's Harlan Williams, who is a motorcycle driving high school kid and they fall in love and it's great, but she's making out with the tree the whole time. The end. Justin, that was, that was pretty good. Um, that was pretty good. You kind it was of, all things we talked about. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I mean, that, that, that covers the beats of it. It's, it's really just like we were saying, like it's. How do you expand upon the plot of a single skit that takes place in a single room most of the time and build a story mm. around that? And you can tell what they do is they take like the I, I would say like every recurring SNL skit has the beats that they always hit um, that you can always expect that kind of yeah. makes them fan favorites. And so you have Mary Catherine Gallagher giving these monologues. You have her. Uh, being kind of like overly exuberant with her emotions. And then you have her like wrecking shit. And so they take that and they just essentially drop those pieces into what would otherwise be kind of just a generic uh, yeah. 
teen comedy story. Um, and there you have a movie. Yeah, they, they were pretty um, smart about it, too, because like. If you asked, if you were to ask anybody like who Mary Catherine Gallagher was, or you know, like who is this character from SNL, they'd be like, "Oh, that's the chick who does this, right?" And she's like always knocking over <laughs> shit. And they'd be like, "Well, they're going to make a movie of that." And be like, "How are you going to make those two things be a movie the whole time?" And it only happens like twice, right? She only does the yeah. outfit thing once, and she like knocks over the chairs in her typical fashion. She strikes the superstar pose once or twice too. So they were. They're- bearing in the um you know the one-to-one onesiness of skit to movie it is the the pieces that are from the skit uh specifically are yeah it's like you're saying they're almost like little cameo callbacks where you could remove them from the story and it would probably be fine they mainly just help to like build the picture of mary Catherine gallagher as this like slightly weird uh individual um which helps um but i think uh what holds the movie together for me is uh molly shannon's performance again she does look like a a mid-30s uh woman playing a teenager um but she is just fully game the entire time uh and she has this like intensity in her face that is very tina belcher um that uh, i think anytime she's on screen uh i'm in it uh, regardless yeah. of how like strong or weak uh, the supporting elements are. And it's not really, ju- it's, it's in addition to like her, her intensity, like crazy, crazy eyed look. She has the long hair that curtains her face and the glasses, which is one-to-one of Tina Belcher. But like, even in some of her like monotone kind of delivery and kind of just like, she's not talking up here. She's kind of talking back here, but she's kind of talking to herself, but also talking to you at the same time. That's very Tina Belcher. And it's, it's, <laughs> Was amazing and and i love that we have that so great a little bit of tina and all of us um let's let's talk a little bit about the supporting cast here so you have glennis johns as um her grandmother uh i love that she gets the one f-bomb of the movie <laughs> yeah <laughs> i did not expect that either when i mean i i think they knew who they casted when they casted this like hollywood legend at, in this snl movie it's yeah. like we're gonna make we're gonna make glennis john say fucking boogie woogie or something like that. <laughs> yeah <laughs> um oh, God. she has this insane uh wheelchair that she's in all the time sure let's let's not make her stand that sounds like the ideal job for me yeah. um and then she has this intensity that kind of matches Mary Catherine's in a way, even though you can tell she's, she's always going to be in the corner for her daughter or granddaughter. granddaughter yeah. um, but uh, still is able to kind of go one-to-one with her in terms of like arguing over whether or not she should be a superstar or a businesswoman uh, in this case, which leads to scenes like the classic, you're horrible scene. And um, my favorite, she's like, I'm sorry. I stayed after school studying business. <laughs> 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 that's such a good line and it's so funny um yeah the the whole like protective grandmother kind of a thing is a fun trope um only to to lead with the bait and switch of like i'm going to tell you how your parents really died um they weren't uh, torn to pieces by a school of hammerhead sharks they were stopped <laughs> to death in a similar high school uh talent competition like she Both. only told her the hammerhead shards to make her feel better. Yeah, no, ridiculous. <laughs> only to be tied back again to uh, 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 her love interests. Uh, parents actually dying by that way, which is <laughs> interesting coincidence, which brings me to a, a neat point. Um, cocktail hour sponsored by uh, uncultured universe. Um, what do you got going? That whole, the whole bit that, that made me laugh the most was the, the bit about the hammerhead sharks. <laughs> um so i was inspired to make a cocktail do a little a- asmr um this is called a shark bite it's a uh, uh, it's rum and sweet and sour mix and blue curacao and a couple drops of grenadine in top uh, that looks to make it bloody and it's really good that looks vibrantly blue wow it is it is violent yeah it's it's like a, a coolant fluid for your car it's good. how does that taste uh very good like the beach um okay like a vacation um 
for my cocktail, I could not help myself. Um, I'm calling it a bottle of yourself, and it's a bottle of Evian. <laughs> <laughs> you specifically went out and bought Evian. I love I it. specifically went to the gas station down the road from my house about an hour ago to buy a bottle of Evian in honor of Elaine Hendricks' villainous character uh, in Superstar, who Shout is out named Elaine. Evian. <laughs> Just so Shout out to funny. Elaine, uh, fan favorite when we uh, watched The Parent Trap live mm-hmm. uh, at the Plaza Theater here in Atlanta. Yeah. I don't think anyone got more applause when they came on screen than uh, her character. Uh, it was it was kind of tied between her and like Chessie. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Those two. Who uh, but this was also our best friends event. in real life, I think. Are they? Amazing. Mm-hmm. Which this was a wussy event. So like. You know, like we're we're gonna cheer for the uh like the, the strong lesbian character who pops out. <laughs> um but also, you know, we love a messy villain, villainous, heinous creature that Elaine loves to play, apparently. We love just like a just an uncompromising bitch. <laughs> uh, yeah. In like a in like a yes queen kind of yeah. way. When she came on screen and I was like, uh Elaine Hendricks, that's amazing. She loves to play a villain. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think she ultimately gets like the the runner up comedy prize for me uh, in this movie. Aside from Molly Shannon, she's the one I go to for the one liners the most. And so anytime she talks about so for for context, she's playing like the the popular head cheerleader at high school, who is Mary Catherine Gallagher's essentially um, uh, nemesis. nemesis. (laughs) Uh, She's dating Will Ferrell, who is Mary Catherine Gallagher's crush. Um, and so she, <laughs> she's clearly this like evil person who is constantly doing like fun runs and walks for stuff like psoriasis and <laughs> yeah. venereal disease. Um, she, <laughs> the way that they bully Mary Catherine Gallagher, <laughs> like what, what does she say? Like Mary Catherine sucks or something like that. Yeah. Um, just like really baseline, uh, <laughs> simple, simple kind of thing. Super like, sucks. Yeah. Um, and then ultimately like nothing can really top the moment in this movie where Mary Catherine Gallagher reaches for like the ultimate burn, which is like, you should be really embarrassed because your parents named you after bottled water, <laughs> which is finally addressing why her name is Abby. Yeah, I know I caught it as soon as, as soon as uh, it was like uttered and like on closed captioning, I was like heavy on. And I was like, like the fucking water. That's incredible. <laughs> It's so good. The writer's room was having fun uh, with that. Um, so she's here. She's a blast. Will Farrow is here again in a dual role as um, Sky, the most popular kid in school. Sky. Very Jimmy Jr. coded. Uh, so in the we watched four Bob's Burgers episodes for our Bob's Burger, ep- uh, Bob's Burger episode. Um, was Jimmy Jr. in any of those? He did uh well uh uh for like a second was he the 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 object of Tina's in the, in Valentine's, the Valentine's yeah yeah yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. so the uh, thing he sucks yeah he sucks the thing with him he is the the son of Jimmy Pesto who is the guy across the street from Bob's Burgers who owns an Italian like pizza restaurant mm-hmm. who is like Bob's nemesis yeah and so. Jimmy and Tina constantly, Jimmy Jr. and Tina constantly have this like, will they or won't they um, connection, even though he mostly ignores her because he's like a stupid little boy yeah. and he only wants to dance is his thing. So he's constantly like breaking out into dance moves. Um, very, and very sky. Uh, uh, will Ferrell in that extremely yeah. sky uh, uh, in this movie. Um, so Will Ferrell with his dance moves, most popular guy in school looks 40. Um, also playing uh, Mary Catherine's subconscious version of God when he comes to her in a vision, um, who seems like a pretty chill dude. Um, yeah, I, like, I love when the dog uh, gets almost killed and uh, arrives uh, at heaven and Will Ferrell has to like send the dog back because Mary Catherine needs it. <laughs> it's so absurd. Yeah, well, um, I thought there were more ridiculous names, but there's really not that not that many. But like Evian and like Sky and Slater are like such <laughs> hilarious names. But then like everyone else kind of has just straightforward names. Uh, Mary Catherine and Maria and Summer. Like Except for 
Father Tylenol Ridley, apparently. Tylenol Ridley, like insane. <laughs> like we can do whatever we want. Like this is an SNL sketch. They no one literally expects nothing sillier from us. This guy's name is Sky Corrigan. Like, uh, yeah. Uh, the structure of the movie is largely like let's have a series of scenes just building up um, each character for the first. 20 minutes or so um let's have mary Catherine gallagher meet her new best friend again uh this movie has a probably a slightly outdated version of like what special ed classes are yeah um it's really just like mainly like the weird kids in this movie Mm -hmm. um meets her best friend there um they have some moments and then like you're saying there's a large unveiling of this massive uh, poster for a talent show to fight venereal disease, um, which then becomes the one and only goal that Mary is uh, fighting for. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, also there's, there's the, the, the early career um, uh, surprise to me uh, appearance of a young Tom green. Um, oh, tell me more about that. Is he the, is he like the crazy, like mean bully kid? Yeah. Um, he, he went on to have like a, a, a ridiculous comedy career on MTV, like the following year, I think it was like the early two thousands, maybe around this time too, uh, mm-hmm. late nineties. Um, just this off the wall character, uh, uh, performer comedian. Um, was he yeah, the guy I, who was married to Drew Barrymore for like, yes, a second? yes. Okay. He's in one of the, uh, one of the, um, the Charlie's angels, one of the yeah. Charlie's angels movies. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, he was married to her. That's right. I forgot about that. Yeah, he he showed up and I was like, huh, this is a very <laughs> 90s movie. Yeah. <laughs> With him oh. in there. All right. Um let's 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 talk through some final thoughts here before we get into end games. Uh so as we as we talk about uh SNL movies as part of these mini series. Is this something you would want to see come back like with the the way that SNL is working these days? Do you want to see them kind of build on a single character? Do you watch SNL these days? I don't watch SNL these days. Um so I wouldn't have any like room to speak to like oh it would be great if they did a sketch like this. Mm-hmm. Um cuz I'm not too familiar with it and I don't think honestly like I think they've fallen out of favor of just the the zeitgeist of like what they used to be in the in this era, uh, yeah. even through the, the early aughts, um, because no one does, has cable anymore, right? Anyone can watch whatever they want, whenever the hell they want, um, which, you know, kind of like shoots in the foot of this kind of programming, right? On once, once, uh, 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 once a week at the same time slot kind of a thing, but it's only on cable. Mm-hmm. Um, every once in a while you get highlight skits or whatever that gets shown on TikTok, talk or Instagram or whatever. But um, yeah, I'm not too familiar with with the the, the current lineup uh, of anybody or like any memorable characters. Uh, I think the time. I think Saturday Night Live has a jumping off point for these television comedic actors to get into film is still like present today. But I think it's evolved to the point where it's less about like let's focus on a single character that they play and more about the actors themselves being breakouts. So you have like someone like Bowen Yang uh, on SNL these days who is showing up in more and more movies, but it's more about like him as an actor and as a presence rather than like any specific character being played. Uh, Yeah. Kind of like, like what Jason Sudeikis kind of did. He didn't have like one specific character that propelled him. He was just a really strong comedic actor. Um, Yeah. And then that's, that's led him to do really, really, really great things with like Ted Lasso and things. Yeah, I think um, you start to see that turn in the Sudeikis years, like with Amy Poehler, with Tina Fey, with Sudeikis, with Bill Hader, Fred Armisen. They all just kind of like develop comedic presences on their own and then bring that into whatever movie TV project they work on next. Yeah. And I think like the last thing, the last movie, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, based on an SNL sketch uh, uh, in recent past, I guess, would be MacGruber. Yeah, I mean, other than yeah, like the the Lonely Island stuff, the Please Don't Destroy stuff. But is MacGruber SNL? Yeah, MacGruber was an SNL sketch. Yeah, Will Forte, right? Will Forte, yeah, yeah. 
yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never saw it. I never saw the movie, but um, <laughs> <laughs> but that's my only touch point there. Well, good to know. Yeah, good um, to know. All right, let's uh, kind of wrap up some thoughts about uh, Superstar. I, I, I'm constantly wishing I had more Bob's Burgers episodes I could have shown you because uh, Molly Shannon does, in fact, play a recurring character on Bob's Burgers. Her name is Millie. She is in Louise's grade. And um, she's often she's often kind of posed as the Hannibal Lecter to Louise's <laughs> Clarice Starling. She's <laughs> psychotic. She's constantly stalking Louise and wants to be her best friend. Um, she knows everything about everyone. And she's just like crazy in the head. And it's Molly Shannon playing this like young blonde girl. That's um, insane. I love that. She's I mean, really good. There's literally nothing stopping us from doing a Bob's Burgers part two follow up episode oh, yeah. where you give me four more episodes to watch. Or we watch the, the Bob's Burgers movie. Or we could do the movie. Who knows? Um, but uh, I had, I honestly, I, I had a, a pretty good time with Superstar. Um, I wrote some of my favorite standout things. Uh, I just, uh, let's see. Uh, I wrote her parents were stomped to death. LOL. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, towards the end of like the talent show, or whatever, uh, either like right when it's starting or right when it's ending and they're handing out the prizes or something. One of the judges or someone has a jacket on and it's from the radio station and it's W G O D. <laughs> and I was like, that's amazing. That's a good time. Well done costume department. Um, yeah. The things you, you mentioned, uh, the, there's a call out with like the, the loudspeaker or something of talking about like undeviled eggs. It's all Mary mag delicious. <laughs> Um, that got a good LOL out of me. Um, yes, uh, this was, this was the main thing where I realized that she is Tina Belcher when she, the, when she first gets called out for making out with the tree, um, she's kind of like apologizing to the nun or whatever. And she's, uh, she just said, I was just doing my part to save the rainforest. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote that down too. That's so good. <laughs> um, and then this last one was was one that got a got a good laugh, laugh out of me. Uh, Miss Gallagher, what was that horrible thing you said to Sister Elaine? I told her to move her big white butt, or I would cold cock her honky ass. That's <laughs> that's such a good line. <laughs> this in the like you said in the writing room, they're just like, no, 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 I got it, I got it, I got it. Read it's that, just. Read that. It's 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 all the theatricality of like a WWE wrestler in the body yeah. of a small high school girl. Right. Um is is what's describing superstar. Uh excellent. Okay. Um shall we uh make our way to the end games and see whether or not I regret making this game for you? You might. You said you were gonna come for me because I kinda I kinda fucked you last game last episode, but um <laughs> Yeah, let's let's see where we end up uh, with this. My feelings would best be expressed in a monologue. 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 Mary Catherine Gallagher. My feelings would best be expressed in a super, 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 super. Mary Catherine Gallagher. Mary Catherine Gallagher. My feelings would best be expressed in a super, 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 super. Mary Catherine Gallagher. My feelings would best be expressed in a Mary Catherine Gallagher. My feelings would best be expressed in a monologue. 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 <laughs> Welcome, Justin, to Mary Catherine Monologue Mania. Here's what this is. We all know that Mary Catherine Gallagher best expresses her feelings in monologue form, monologue. preferably from a made-for-TV movie, if we can find it. Okay. In that spirit... I have come up with a guessing game as we are wont to do on this podcast. Yep. Here's, here's how it works. Okay. I will perform a monologue from a movie that we have covered on this podcast. And you will have to tell me which one pretty simple, right? Great. What's the, catch? here's the tricky bit. Here's ah. the tricky bit. And you're going to have to remember much like jeopardy, your answer must be worded in a very particular way, which is my feelings would best be expressed in a monologue from the made for TV movie blank starring blank. So, so okay, I need, so you need okay. the movie and the star 
uh, in this case, feel free to embellish, um, you know, give it a little zhuzh, but that's essentially what I'm looking for. Would you like to practice? So my feelings would best be described in a monologue from made for TV movie blank. Okay. Starring a blank. Yeah. Uh, from, okay. from the made for TV movie blank starring blank. Great. You got so, it. So the made for TV movie, the social network starring a young miss Jesse Eisenberg. Yeah. Miss Jesse Eisenberg. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. I have, Oh God. I have 10 monologues prepared for you. <laughs> that Why would you do that to yourself? <laughs> do my best to act my way through. Um, and we'll see how this goes. Yep. Um, and some of them are uh, shorter than others. Means, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll just roll with it. Yeah. Um, who's defining what a monologue is and whether or not it needs to contain one yeah. person speaking? Yeah. Okay. Are you ready? Hit me. Number one. I'm such a big coward. All I do is hide. All of this magic is to keep everybody away. I can't stand how scared I am. <coughs> That's amazing. Uh, my feelings would best be described in a monologue from the made-for-TV movie Howl's Moving Castle, starring a young, voluptuous Christian Bale. Excellent. 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 You got it. That's exactly how it's supposed to be. Okay. Okay, got it. Yeah. Number two. You were shoveling snow. <laughs> I what? You were just a little girl in a flannel nightgown, and you were shoveling snow from the walk in front of our house. Wow. And I was the snow. I was the snow. And everywhere it landed and everywhere it covered, you scooped me up in a big red shovel. You scooped me up. Uh, out of context, this is icky. Yeah, I made some um, hard ones for you. But 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 my feelings would best be described in a monologue from the made for TV movie The Family Stone, starring the irreplaceable, um it, indomitable Sarah Jessica Parker and Luke Wilson. Excellent. You got it. All right. Number three. This was a great idea, honey. Really, it's just magical. It makes me wish every night was Halloween. I'm sorry, Em. Wait, wait, not yet. What? You're supposed to keep it lit. Why? Ancient tradition? Henry, it's Halloween, not Hanukkah. Baby, I'm lit and you're lit. But honey, but our little friend here, his night's over. You know, there are rules. You should be more careful. You might upset someone. Oh, please. Who? That was terrific back and forth. I love it. But to really express my feelings, they would be best described in a monologue from the made-for-TV movie <laughs> Trick or Treat, starring those people and um, that one guy. I, I need a name for name. this to count, Justin. Uh, uh, oh, Come uh, on. Anna, Anna Paquin. There our you young there Anna you. Paquin before you her treat one Anna days. Paquin. All right, excellent. Three for three. Number four. Mm -hmm. I can't see what's around the tree when I'm pawing through the presents, but when I sit back and get my present unwrapped, I look up and I see my parents. I see and smell my brother. That's clearly where the gas is. And I see my sister with something that looks like gingerbread on her glasses. And we don't have gingerbread, so this is odd. We made funny ornaments for the tree this year, and we make funny ornaments sitting here around the tree. So jolly. I didn't expect to feel this way. I was focusing on Santa, but the best presents are sitting here, and they aren't even wrapped up. Hold for tears, hold for tears. But really, my feelings would best be described in a monologue from the made-for-TV TV show bob's burgers starring h john benjamin gave you a little tricky one there you got it <laughs> all right number five um i just wanted to say i may have been a bit harsh at first well what i really mean is thank you for saving my life for saving our lives you know i come up here every night and look out at to that hill 
and imagine what it must be like on the other side. It's funny, I've, I've never actually felt grass beneath my feet. I'm sorry. Uh, here I am rambling on about hills and grass. Uh, you had something you wanted to say. <laughs> I got it. I got it at the last minute. My feelings would best be described in a monologue from the made-for-TV movie Chicken Run starring Mel Gibson. Starring Mel Gibson. Are you looking at our list of episodes right now? I'm looking at the type, the typed thing that you wrote down. My feelings okay. would best be described, just so I don't forget. <laughs> I'm trying to read what's on your glasses. Um, okay, excellent. Number six. And I suppose you just expect me to go weak at the knees and fall into your arms and cry hysterically and say we'll just figure this whole thing out? A bicontinental relationship with our daughters being raised here and there, and and you and I just picking up where we left off and growing old together, and and come on, Nick, what do you expect to live happily ever after? Yes, to all of the above, except you don't have to cry hysterically. Oh yes, I do. Ah. <sighs> uh. My feelings about this would best be described in a monologue from the made-for-TV movie *The Parent Trap*, starring the uh, uh, the pre-drug-addled Lindsay Lohan. Oh, yes. Oh. <laughs> six for six. All right, number seven. What the hell does that have to do with anything? That will prove I'm over Joe because I fuck somebody. Harry, you're going to have to move back to New Jersey because you've slept with everybody in New York, and I don't see that turning Helen into a faint memory for you. Besides, I will make love to somebody when it's making love. Not the way you do it, like you're out for revenge or something. <laughs> what a way to put it. Well done. Uh, my feelings would best be described in a monologue from the made-for-TV movie When Harry Met Sally, starring <laughs> the incomparable Meg Ryan and the effervescent sweater clad billy crystal sweater must be mentioned correct all right you're killing it i made so many of these i'm so, so many okay. <laughs> number eight leslie and i have an amazing relationship and it's very physical he he still pushes all of my buttons people say oh but he's so much older than you and you know what i'm the one having to push him away we have so much in common. We both love soup and snow peas. We, we love the outdoors and talking and not talking. We could not talk or talk forever and still find things to not talk about. <sighs> My feelings would best be described in a monologue from the made-for-TV movie Best in Show, starring Christopher Guest, a movie by Christopher Guest, written by Christopher or, Guest. By Christopher, or Christopher Guest. Or Christopher Guest. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Only two more. You're doing yep. great. I'm great. Three weeks from now, I will be harvesting my crops. Imagine where you will be, and it will be so. Hold the line. Stay with me. If you find yourself alone riding in the green fields with the sun on your face, do not be troubled, for you are in Elysium, and you're already dead. My God. Uh, my feelings would best be described in a monologue from the made-for-TV movie Young Frankenstein? Starring Gene Wilder? Incorrect. Uh, Would you like a hint? Yeah. Give me another monologue. This, <laughs> this, this one's a trick. This one... Um, take, it, take it back. I take it back. Some would say all the way back. To the very first episode that we did? Oh, Elysium. Oh, of course. Oh, um, so yeah, my feelings would best be described in a monologue from the made for TV movie Gladiator, starting starring Russell Crowe from the episode that we did not release. <laughs> from the very long first episode that uh, is is somewhere out there. Yeah. It's like two hours long. Yeah. 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 We we hadn't locked down the premise just yet. Mm. Um I got you on that one. Okay. Did, bitch. Number ten, last one. 
you thought I didn't know. I've known what was happening for quite some time. It just took me a little while to find a suitable alternative for Jacqueline. And that James Holt job was just so absurdly overpaid that, of course, she jumped at it. So I just had to tell Irv that Jacqueline was unavailable. Truth is, there's no one that can do what I can do, including her. Any of the other choices would have found that job impossible and the magazine would have suffered, especially because of the list. The list of designers, photographers, editors, writers, models, all of whom were found by me, nurtured by me, and have promised me that they will follow me whenever and if ever I choose to leave Runway. So he reconsidered. But I was very, very impressed by how intently you tried to warn me. I never thought I would say this, Andrea, but I really, I see a great deal of myself in you. You can see beyond what people want and what they need, and you can choose for yourself. That's so good. Joe, you should do drag <laughs> and do the line reading with that. That would be amazing. <laughs> to encapsulate it all, my feelings would best be described in a monologue from the made-for-TV movie The Devil Wears Prada, starring God herself. <laughs> Meryl Streep. <laughs> and I, then Natalie's there too. I, I knew the obvious choice was the Cerulean monologue. I almost went with just like a one-off random conversation from the movie, but then I I, I saw this block of text that it's I a really good want to chew on. It's a good yeah. block. You done good. Just an excellent. Uh, I, I would say that you are the undisputed champ of Mary Catherine monologue mania. Mm. Congratulations. <sighs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. I feel um, elated. I feel uh, overcome with emotion. I want to dance. I want to yell at my grandmother and <laughs> tell her she's horrible, slam the door in her face, and jump in a pool after I throwed a boy in there after he said, I can't swim great. Um, I'm going to do all the things. Kill you with my telekinesis from <laughs> Carrie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's so good. Which was so fun that, like, her job, like her day job was working at a video store, like all an already dying relic of the late nineties and the early two thousands. I wanted that job so bad. So uh, fun. I, I, I want to go work at a video store right now. I'm uh, um, we just started the, a couple days ago, a new, uh, it just, it's, it's brand new. It just premiered on Wednesday, a new, um, dimension 20, uh, season, uh, uh, show called never stop blowing up. And it centers <laughs> around, a video store, one of the last remaining video stores in America and the hilarity that ensues there. Um, so much fun. So it was fun to like have those connections between like, Oh, Mary Catherine is working at a video store and we're watching this thing that takes place in a video store. Very fun. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's all kismet. You want to put people straight back into the nineties, put a video store into put a video place. store. Speaking of video store, let's take it back to the times of video stores with our next mini series joe did we decide i think i'm gonna throw three options at you and you can tell me which direction we're feeling for next month and maybe we'll leave it up to a poll on no, no, our... no 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 we 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 decided uh, i'm we good did? with the the one you texted earlier let's, okay yeah. great let's do that okay <laughs> so uh uh what we're gonna do um we're gonna go to do something a little um unconventional um uh, I guess we could call it our just like law enforcement mini series. I was going to say, <laughs> <laughs> which is really strange, like, because we're both not law enforcement enthusiasts by any means. But yeah. it just so happens that these two movies, you gave me yours, and I was trying to find a connection to it to like. They are classics to... of the genre. It's, it's kind of a crime genre, but more told okay. from the, the police side of things. Okay, we'll just call it, yeah. Okay, we'll call it the crime. Crime Corner July. Crime Corner July. Um, uh -huh. uh, uh, CCJ. Um, I guess we'll start with mine uh, to kind of like give you my, an idea of the spectrum of movies that we're talking about. So mine is over here and Joe's is over here. <laughs> we're going to start with mine. It's from, uh, I want to say it's like 1985, I think, the, uh, the original. Um, oh, no, it's not. It's, it's from my, the year of my birth, 1987. 
Um, we're gonna be doing RoboCop. <laughs> RoboCop, which I have never <coughs> seen or any of the, I think, many sequels. There were many, and I only saw the the OG. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't see the remake that they did in like 2019 or something like that. That did terrible, mm -hmm. um, uh, apparently. But yeah, we'll start there. Um, this it's a ridiculous, over the top, hyper violent, crazy movie that I should not have been watching at four <laughs> or five years old. But it is ingrained in my memory of like, yeah, I watched RoboCop a bunch, and um, we'll we'll have a whole discussion about that of like i can't imagine a child watching this so much um yeah but we'll we'll paint some background history and we'll go from there and then uh we'll round out the month with your pick which we'll uh disclose uh on the next month or the next uh, I, episode i think a a classic 80s action movie just falls right in line for justin and when i tell people what my episode is it's gonna fall right in line for me absolute jonas this would be great <laughs> And then I think from there, like we can look at some of these others uh, that we have uh, posted up. We got some foreign language flicks uh, we're going to discuss. Um, we're going to circle back to maybe some actors. Um, yeah. I think there's a there's going to be a Winona series. I'm really excited for the Winona. That's coming up in the next few months regardless. We'll talk yeah. Winona. We'll do that. Um, we might do some Jack Black discussion. Um, mm -hmm. We might come back and hit with another uh, wild card month of doing a, a Bob's Burgers. Maybe that's when I throw in an album or something. I've been hitting Joe over the head with like, what albums have you heard or haven't heard that were yeah. influential to me? So maybe we'll go back and do that. We need to go back into our text chain because we keep texting each other ideas for mini series that are like bangers and then forgetting about them. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> we need to hire <laughs> somebody write to write these come. down one of these days. We need to go back. We should get someone to, to comb through our data. Uh, we'll get big AI on it, and, and they can look at it. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was the uh, uncultured universe uh, th that does SNL. Uh, it was, was a fun miniseries. This was great. Um, be sure to check us out on all the socials and um, at uh, uncultured universe. Uh, just just do that there. Search for the hashtag. Catch us on TikTok, Instagram, um, uh, YouTube, of course, and wherever you get your pods casted at. Check us out there. And uh, we'll catch you for next month in July where we go to Crime Corner July. Uh, catch you guys later. Very exciting. Bye. Bye.